What's up, everybody? We're back at it again. We're here to paint. We're gonna paint more flowers. More flowers again. Yet again, I will be painting flowers for the next handful of months uh, until I decide to take a break. But uh, it's looking good, so I can't really complain. So, um, honestly, yay flowers. I'm glad you're enjoying my suffering. So this, even though it looks pretty complex, it's actually pretty subtle. Uh, looking at a lot of white, uh, some very light reddish browns, and then moving down, which you can't quite see yet, but you can see the tip of that there. It's more of that reddish brown, maybe a little more muted, and it's pretty much just just that reddish brown color in the entire section. So. It's gonna be super subtle. I think that works out perfectly because uh, it's off to the side of the painting. We don't necessarily want to bring people's eye to the edge of the painting and potentially off the painting. We want to keep the uh, the viewer's eye moving within the square and not, you know, directly off. So um, even here where there's a face, it is still kind of held on the composition by that uh, solid hood. Uh, framing, which that's actually the reason why frames exist, is to keep your focus within a specific uh, you know, painting, photograph, whatever. So the thicker the frame, the less distractions there are around. And we're gonna need a lot of white, we're gonna need reddish brown, we need the reddish brown going first. I uh, need a better place for my directions. I'm gonna start actually using my easel for something. So. We'll keep the brushes there. Paper towels over here. Uh, I could probably even move my my medium over, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Things are set up, and I'm still procrastinating. Still procrastinating. What do I need? First thing, mix the reddish brown. Now this is a full reddish brown, so we are going to start with our. Come on, you can do it. Our quinacridone magenta. Come on, quinacridone magenta. There you go. And pull that out. We do need a significant amount because there's a lot of it in this uh, section. We're going to take some brown, we're going to work the brown in, we're going to make it dark. We are also going to need to make it uh, significantly less intense because if we pull it thin, you'll see that it is still very intense. You can also see how much more space I have. Holy crap, I'm loving it. Okay, so uh, to Lower the intensity, we're going to mix a green, because green is the opposite of red. So, rather than mix a green separately, we're just going to put some yellow and some blue into our mixture. And we're going to use way too much yellow, like I always do. And we're going to make... Maybe I'll add a little bit more of it. Just to make sure it's not too neutral. I think we're good to go. So, I should probably mix a slightly lighter version. So let's grab some of this. And it's going to take a lot of white because there's so much of it. I didn't mix a ton. I started with way too much magenta, but let's just see how this goes. We lighten it a little bit. Now, it's been a while since I've gotten into lecture mode and really taught anything, but uh, if you add white to something, you can refer to it as a tint of a specific color. So if you take orange and you add white to it, you're creating a tint of orange. If you add black to it or you make it darker, uh, you are creating a shade of that color. So if you take orange and you add black or a dark color to make it closer to black. We know that black is bad and we don't use black. But um, the way you refer to it is still a shade. Uh, so uh, you can have a shade of orange, shade of yellow, and it's just a darker version of that color. So this is a tint of red, and we're going to use that quite a bit in this section.
So we have uh, that section basically done. So next, we're going to tackle the seam, and this will be uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, it's going to have a white highlight going through most of it along the top edge. Uh, so you might have to mix a subtle brownish green uh, for a lot of it, um, but uh, should be pretty straightforward. So we'll get that brush clean, and this brush. Okay, so I guess we're going to start with just pure white. Uh, obviously very thin, but pure white. And there's a little bit of that other color still on my brush, but that's okay. We're just basically making a slight off-white. Because using solid, solid white, like pure white in your painting, can sometimes be a little too bold. So uh, if you have a little bit of paint still in your brush, it doesn't hurt to... to Leave it there and not clean your brush out entirely. So I am way far away from my, my iPad where I keep my, my reference. And that is too dark. That is way too dark. So maybe in this case we do want pure, pure white. So I'm gonna clean this brush real quick. Okay, so let's just get some of this and pull it out here. It's medium. And that is more of what we are looking for. What's your favorite color and why? My favorite color is purple. And why? I mean, I, I don't know. Does anyone have a, a reason why they have their favorite color? Um, I mean, for me, I think it's it's interesting. I think the difference between like a warm and cool purple, it's very dynamic. It has very different uh, vibes to it. Um, I really I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. Um, it's also the furthest from yellow, which is my least favorite color, and it drives me absolutely crazy. So that, that might have something to do with it too. But uh, what are yours? I'm interested to hear how you guys explain what your favorite color is. Because it's not an easy thing to do, to be honest. Why is black not a color or white? And yes, black and red, you could say. Uh, so maybe thanks for letting me be here as always. I like today's subtitle. <laughs> thanks, Ace. Uh, titles are always difficult for me, I'm not sure why, so I just end up saying random stuff. But uh, black and white are not colors, because black is technically the absence of light, uh, and color is just, um, okay, I need to put my brushes down first. So, we have white light, and white light it is the combination of all colors. It's not a color because a color by definition is the splitting of white light into the rainbow. So if you look at a rainbow, there's no white in the rainbow. And if you look at a prism, you know, you have white light coming in and then it splits and then it, you know, the colors come out. There's no black or white there. Uh, so white is technically all the colors combined and black is what you get when you have no white light at all or hey colored light at all. So um, that's why they're not, because they're essentially zero and infinity uh, were the two extremes and the colors are only in that split uh, refraction of white light. Hope I answered your question.
Uh, how do you know if you need more medium? So uh, when you're when you're actually laying the paint down, there are a few things that that can happen, um, and it depends on if you're working wet into wet or wet on dry, dry on wet. Uh, the paint is going to come off of your brush differently. And I can actually show this really well, I think. So if there's not enough medium, I'm just going to kind of dip this in the thicker paint and just kind of pull it out here. And we're going to put this, uh, which has does not have enough medium at all. Um, when we put it down, if we're trying to fill this space, you can see that quality of paint, that stroke quality. It's very dry and not smooth. And to be honest, not a whole lot of paint is coming off of the brush. And that's how, unless you're going for that effect, you need more medium. Uh, this, this goes for acrylic as well. That means you need more water. Um, if your goal is to have smooth brush strokes. So uh, if you have um, the correct amount of medium, you'll basically have, you know, what I, what I put there, if you saw that, uh, smoother strokes. Now, if you have too much medium, let me really get this going. First off, you may end up with too thin of a color that may not even be visible, or you just have these super thick blobby areas, which that doesn't look too much different than what I have here, but it is much thinner and it's more of like a puddle than a brush stroke. And Again, there are times where you want that as well, but uh, um, you do need to be careful you don't use too much medium. Now, if I was painting into wet, uh, which I'm actually going to, I'm gonna paint white into this, into the back of this leaf. And when I do that, I will be painting into wet paint rather than the dry panel. And when we do that, we kind of have different medium rules that we need to follow. Um, and it kind of just happens naturally. You don't really think about it too much, but. Um, if you paint wet, like you have a lot of medium and you're painting into something that is already wet paint, uh, you're not going to affect the color that much. So if I wanted to uh, paint white into here to make that a gradation from uh, a lighter color to a darker color, if I have too much medium, I'm not really going to change that color much. So in this case, we have to use much less medium uh, and paint thicker paint into that. And if you think about it, you're essentially just adding your medium to your paint on the panel itself, rather than pre-mixing. Um, you already have medium here, so you need to add just the paint uh, to have the correct, uh, um, what's a good word for it? Um, I don't know, bad remember words. Uh, this isn't the first time it's come up in stream, but uh, the right, uh, I don't know, when something's right, uh, well, I can think of as viscosity and it's not it. Although, I guess kind of. But uh, you get what I'm trying to say. So what I need to do here is I need to have white, but I need it to be relatively dry with not a lot of medium in there. And actually, I am going to make a subtle tint of the color that we have there rather than to go pure white. We may have to go pure white, but I don't want to start super um, uh, bold and then have to fix it. Uh, I'd much rather start subtle and uh, make it more bold if you have to really. This is a weird, weird situation I have here with this uh, detail camera. So we'll see how this goes. So, man, this is really weird. See, I have almost no medium in this. And it's already very smooth. Don't need to do a whole lot to it. This part of this is working at this angle and having to look back at my reference.
So, as always, thanks for hanging out. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, you know what? Hit the bell icon too. But uh, thanks for hanging out as always. Um, I will see you uh, tomorrow, same time, same place. Thanks. Later.